All right, so now we're going to be looking at a snort log. If we go to C, course file, labs, this is just going to be a text file. Here it is, hacklog.txt. <clears throat> and this is simply a, a, a printout or an export of a snort log for a different certain day and time. Let's say we went to the IDS guys or went to the network engineers and said, I want to see the network IDS logs from this time to this time. Now, in this scenario, you know, we're basically setting it up as if, uh, you know, a network admin came in and said, hey, something's weird on this box. We notice there's this program on there that we don't know what it is. And there's also a user account named Lexus that we didn't put there and see if you can find out anything. And immediately we can see here, as I highlight this, we can see that traffic to that particular machine, one piece of traffic, if somebody's gotten on the command line and they've issued the command net user Lexus moons 567 add, and what that does in the Windows command line is it creates an account named Lexus, um, gives it a password of moon 567 dollar sign dollar sign, and adds it to uh, that machine. Now we can see that this traffic is coming from the IP address of 124 here. So just right there, we've already narrowed it down and gotten a few pieces of intelligence. We know it's coming from 124. We know he added a user named Lexus. Now what you see, if you look right under that, look if you look here, you can see that the traffic looks identical except for the direction is reversed. That's because once he was on this machine, uh, remotely on the command line, that traffic had to be echoed back to him on his screen. So you're going to see two instances of everything here. Now the other thing they told us is something called PW Dump 2 <clears throat> was on the machine and they don't know what it's doing there and what it does. Well if we search through the log for that we can see where he's TFTP'd and again it appears he did this from the command line. He issued the TFTP command with the dash I switch to uh, denote binary transfer. So it looks like he put PW Dump over there. Now that's all we know so thus far. We know he put PW Dump there. We know he added a user account, and we just we need to know a little more information. Now <clears throat> we could keep searching for PW Dump to see if it shows up anywhere else in the logs. Now you could do the manual search just by scrolling through like I'm doing. But you're probably going to be better off in our find. You could do find next. Now, keep in mind, we're just simply looking at a text file here. Realistically, if this were the traffic for a whole network, it'd be a nicer front end that we'd probably be querying this, uh, you know, log with. Now, we can see there's PW dump again right there. We can see the actual binary breakdown of the file. Let's just keep searching for it. All right, we can see it again right there. <clears throat> and it looks like he actually ran it here. So he ran it, and whatever the program does, he told it to output that to inet pub www root and create a text file named passes.txt. So one thing we could do is look on www root on that infected machine and see what that is. <clears throat> but since we don't really know what PW dump is yet, let's go out and research that and find out. We'll just go to Google. And let's just search for PW dump. Now we can see there's quite a few little snig bits of it here. So now we can see that it's actually uh, got something to do with passwords, right? And if you keep reading, you'll see that it actually tells you that it actually dumps passwords. And there's a download for the source. It actually dumps passwords either to the screen or dumps it to a text file. And it looks like our particular attacker dumped it to a text file on inetpub www root. And we can see that 
version 2, which is what he had, is not the latest version. There are several other versions of it as well. So if you want it, if this were a real case, you'd probably get some of these tools, research them, run them on a pristine, uh, safe environment just to see what they do. So then you have a better idea of the capabilities of the attacker, plus you have some idea of exactly what they were trying to accomplish. And just based on what we've seen here, you know, it looks like this individual was trying to just get passwords. He created himself a backdoor by creating an account on the machine, and then he immediately went for trying to dump the passwords that were currently on the machine. So that could be an attempt at privilege escalation, or maybe he just wants those credentials to log into something else. So this is one big part of network forensics is knowing how to go out and actually research. So keep this little tidbit in mind and make sure you apply this to any time you're looking at log files, any time you're given log files. Just start searching through, looking for things based on a little bit of information the victim's giving you. And then you're going to have to go out and do some research if you don't know what all of these different things that you find on the machine actually mean. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to, to go out and search. Um, nobody knows everything.